Hello guys today and welcome to Architecture Tutorials here on YouTube. Um, what we're going to do over these next video tutorials, what you'll see starts appearing on our page here, is take you through all the necessary programs that you'll need, uh, firstly as an architecture student, but also, I mean this later on comes when you're working in practice, um, to be able to use them later on as well. Now, although it's called Architecture Tutorials, not necessarily just for architects, um, there's a lot of things on here that you can uh, use them for, graphic design, uh, carpentry, kind of architectural technologists, the things we'll be going through, everyone can use them, even if you're not related to the construction or design industry whatsoever, uh, especially when we come onto the Photoshop tutorials, just to have a bit of fun on there as well, uh, it's pretty decent. So what we're going to start off with today is one of the uh, packages which a lot of people use, Again, not just necessarily architecture students or architects, uh, people creating different diagrams or product design, etc. And that one is Google SketchUp. Um, now, on here at the moment, I'm using, if you can see it up at the top here, I'm using SketchUp Make. Um, now, the difference, I'll show you if you go onto sketchup.com uh, and you can download Google SketchUp. There's two different types. Uh, there's one which has the complete pro features and then one which pretty much has everything um, just then few little things which aren't necessary in a lot of circumstances most of the time you only need the SketchUp make now what you do is click on here you can either click personal projects or educational use uh, and you showed the two different ones we've got SketchUp make which I use which is completely free uh, and then SketchUp Pro. Now you can see the differences. Um, the things that you can't necessarily do uh, is printing drawings to scale. Um, but there's a ways around a lot of these things uh, that you can actually get around it with certain plugins. So you can see they're exchanging CAD files with other, pro other programs. You can actually do this on SketchUp Make as well. And I'll show you in later tutorials how you can do that. Um, just to show you the example, SketchUp Pro the price at the moment $495 plus $95 per year maintenance and support now if you're a student that is a lot of money to pay out um, so I recommend simply getting uh, a SketchUp Make program now when you uh, log on to SketchUp Make you're presented with this screen now if you log on for the first time uh, you'll be asked what unit you want to use if it doesn't show up, or if you need to change it after you've if you've missed that screen, simply go to SketchUp at the top, um, go to Preferences, and then on the left-hand side, click Template. Now you can see there's a lot of different templates in here. Um, you can see the one highlighted, which I use, is the Architectural Design Millimeters. Now, depending on what you're doing, is depending on what you can click on. Really, you can see there's construction documentation. Uh, if you're creating floor plans, etc urban planning, landscape architecture, woodworking, if you're doing a bit of carpentry design before you get your hands dirty uh, and then as you can see the new one that's been added at the bottom is 3D printing uh, which will come on in a later tutorial as well when you start looking at in particular we're looking at the MakerBot uh, and how to create files in SketchUp to use in the MakerBot but that's there to be able to use as a template as well. Uh, if you're in the US for instance uh, you can see you can do architectural design feet and inches I tend to stick to millimeters because that's what we kind of work in in the UK architectural industry. So select that and it'll work straight away. Now, once you've done all that, you'll be presented with this screen. Um, as you can see, we've got this beautiful woman standing in the middle of just to give this kind of a center of proportion. Uh, and now I'll show you two basic tools first of all. Uh, at the top here, you can see we've got the orbit tool. By clicking this, and then clicking into the area around here by clicking down and holding and then moving your mouse around you can see you move it uh, orbit in three dimensions just to let you know as well obviously the lines the blue the green and the red are the X Y and Z axis that you know for 3d design the one to the right of the orbit tool is the pan tool and this simply pans along a certain sh shape uh, in a direction. Just to give you a little shortcut as well, uh, we'll be talking a lot about shortcuts 
especially in these programs, shortcuts can save you when you work it out literally hours. By clicking the orbit tool and then holding down the shift key, you can see it changes from the orbit to the pan tool. So then you can orbit round, shift, and then pan. Okay, that's the the movement tools that we'll go through first of all. Uh, the one on the top left of the toolbar you can see is the select tool. This is simply to change it to an arrow and then you can select objects. Uh, in this instance what we'll do is get rid of this woman because she can get in the way of shapes to start off with. We can put it back in at a later date or there's different people you can add uh, when I go through adding shapes uh, and different uh, kind of things that people have created you can add them into as well which I'll go on in a later tutorial. So we could click on her left click and then you can either click your backspace button and she'll disappear or simply right click and erase. You can see she's disappeared. Voila. Okay what we'll go through first is creating simple lines. Now at the top you can see here we have the line tool. Uh, by clicking and holding it gives us the option of line or freehand uh, so you'd simply hover over, release the mouse and you'd select freehand for instance. We'll stick with line for now. You can see it turns to a nice pencil uh, and to create a line it's very simple click on one point so in this instance we'll use the origin so click once and then by moving your mouse around you can see we can create a line in various axes now you'll see it actually snaps as well. Uh, you can actually turn off snap, uh, which I'll show you later on as well. But it can snap to one of the axes, and then by simply moving along, it creates a longer length. Um, if you look in the bottom corner, you can see here, it actually gives the length of the uh, line which you've created. You can see it getting longer and shorter. If you want to create a very specific one, all that you do is when you're in the direction you want to go in, simply enter it. So in this instance, we'll use 3,000 millimeters. Type it in, and then click Enter, and you'll see you've got a line which is perfectly 3,000 millimeters long now. Now to turn this into a 2D shape, uh, in this instance, we'll create a rectangle. All that we do is go in the opposite direction. Uh, again, you can simply click where you want it, or in this instance, we'll make it 2,000 millimeters, so two meters. And you see we've got two lines now. Now to turn this into a rectangle, uh, you don't need to come back on yourself and type in 3000. All that happens is once you get back towards that line, you'll see it simply snaps into place. Click once, and again, create the fourth line for the shape. Again, you'll see it snaps into place. We don't need to type in 2000. And there you go. There we have it, our first shape. And you'll see once the shape is actually created, uh, we call it an extrudable shape. It'll actually turn a grey colour. Um, so you can see it's actually a form shape. Uh, now again, as I said before, on the toolbar, you have line and freehand. Uh, by clicking freehand, you can simply create a shape. Uh, it will actually join itself up. Uh, and there you can see we have a freehand shape. Not super accurate, not at all accurate really, uh, but it does have its uses later on. So we get rid of that. Uh, now, a little bit further along, we have the shape tool. Now, clicking and holding down, we have rectangle, circle, and polygon. Uh, so to create a rectangle again, starting off at your start point, click and this time hold down, and then you can see you can create this rectangle shape or square. You can see at a certain point it actually snaps uh, to a square so it's even on all sides uh, you get that kind of dashed diagonal line to show that. Now what you also get is if you move it a bit further down you get the golden section uh, snapping into place uh, especially if you're doing architectural design this is a very key feature kind of the ratio 1 to 1 1.1618 I think which is very pleasing and aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, so you can do that as well. Uh, again, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner dimensions. Uh, again, we can do exactly the same as we did before. We can actually enter the dimensions. So while still holding down on the left 
mouse button, simply enter. So for this instance, we'll create a 2000 by 3000. Click enter, and you'll see that shape is exactly the same as the one before. Just took a little less time to create. Now what we're going to do is get rid of that first. So Command Z to get rid of things, to undo. Uh, we're going to use, uh, again, different shapes you can create. So in this instance, the circle, simply clicking on a point and extruding out will create a shape. Uh, and again, you can enter the diameter that you want. Uh, there you go, the radius and diameter. So you can simply enter, say, for instance, you want it 400. There you go. Now what we're going to move on to is the push-pull tool, which you can see here. So select the push-pull tool, uh, and this is what turns our 2D shapes into a 3D shape. So you can see here, all we do is hover over the push-pull tool over that 2D shape, and it'll turn a blue kind of hashed color. This means it's selected. Now by clicking and holding, we can move up and down and turn that 2D shape into a 3D shape. And again, you can see that distance. So we can, to a distance we want, or if we want it to be perfect, simply enter the distance. So in this instance, we'll enter 4,000, so 4 meters, click enter. And there we have it, that shape. And this can be done exactly the same with the circle shape, for instance. So creating that 2D shape, and then using the push-pull feature, we can move up and down to create those 3D shapes. And then again, the other one we have there is the polygon tool. So creating that polygon shape using the push and pull tool, we can extract, turning our 2D shapes into 3D shapes. And again, works exactly the same for the freehand tool, creating that random shape and then simply using the push-pull feature, you can see turns that what was originally a 2D shape into that 3D shape. You can create interesting forms with that. Um, well, thanks for watching this uh, first part, showing you just the basics of what to do in SketchUp. Uh, more videos will be following, so click to subscribe or watch the other videos. Uh, and what we'll be going on to in the next SketchUp tutorial is then pushing and pulling uh, shapes out of the 3D shapes. Uh, so creating quite in-depth and interesting forms out of the different shapes. So tune in next time uh, and keep watching architecture tutorials. Thank you.